Hello, and in this video, we're going to be talking about how to use Tor with the Python requests library. So hopefully you already know about Tor. Tor is the free software that enables anonymous communications. It's used for lots of different things. You may have seen the uh, Tor browser. This is the software that uh, runs you know, the Tor hidden sites and um, the dark web. Um, and Python request library is kind of the ubiquitous HTTP, HTTP requesting library. It just makes um, doing those kinds of requests super, super easy. It's pretty fantastic, and there's a lot of cool little add-ons for it. Um, so in this video, we're going to be learning how to make HTTP requests in Python through Tor. Uh, we're going to assume that you already have Tor and request installed. If you don't, um, go to their, each one has a great website that'll walk you through it, um, kind of beyond the scope of this little video. Um, so first of all, before we get started, we of course need to import the request library. And one thing we're going to be doing differently, if you've used requests before, you, you may not have used the session object. And so what we're going to be doing, the very first thing is we're going to be creating a session object. So that's just like it shows right here. And that's a little bit different than um, usual. So this is how we usually do it. Like if you used a request before, probably this is how you did it. You just called request.get and then you gave it a URL. Um, if we go back, the session object, what's kind of cool about it is that it's going to allow us to have a certain amount of persistence so we can do some certain settings. So like one of the settings we're going to be doing is we want this re session object to use the same proxies over and over again. And so we're going to do this. We're going to check our current IP. Uh, I'm not going to be showing you my real IP address. Instead, I'm going to be using a fake one. So. Yes, hopefully it doesn't disappoint me too much. So this is without Tor. So we're gonna do it without Tor. And now we're gonna go, we're gonna do um, that session object. And we're gonna give it a URL. So session.get, give it the URL. Um, we're gonna go to this um, HTTP bin.org. It's got a whole bunch of cool like utilities for testing out stuff like this. Highly recommend it. Um, and what this is gonna do is basically it's just gonna return to us the IP address who's making this request. And that's going to be just as we thought. It's it's me. That's the address that I'm saying I have. And so that's the expected result. So now we're going to set up Tor to, well, we're going to set up request to use Tor. And we're going to do that by um, setting up these uh, proxies. So we're going to make ourselves a little dictionary and give these uh, proxies to that dictionary. And this is then the session. We'll use those proxies to make the requests. And we do it just the same way, right? So sessions no session <laughs> dot get and then we give the URL and we're gonna print it out. So that gives us this URL that's not mine. Or yes, URL. Sorry about that. This IP address that is not mine. Um, this is an IP address actually from I believe East Africa, but I'm in Seattle, so it's it's not me. So it's working very well to anonymize me. So that's not who I am. Okay, right, so now um how about dark web requests? All right. Ooh, sounds scary. Um one thing about the dark web is that it's mostly Tor hidden services. So as long as you have a Tor Tor running, you can get to these dark web or dark, or these dark web or hidden services. Um, we're going to be going to Facebook. So Facebook actually runs um, a dark website or um, a hidden service. Um, people always say dark web, but it's it's just generally generally speaking, it's going to be Tor hidden services, but everyone likes to say the dark web. So, um, so we're going to go there. Um, if you go there without Tor, you're going to see nothing. So you do need to get to this site, this URL here, this Facebook core WWI, um, you need Tor running. So, um, we're going to try that session object that we we've already gotten Tor set up with those little proxies. So we're going to, we're going to go to this Facebook, the secret Facebook. It's not really a secret. Um, so yeah, so it gets us some data. So it's just like a normal HTTP request. Because if you look here, this is a dot onion address. That's not that's not an actual. Well, that's not a normal um, top level domain. Okay, so um, so now we have access through the dark web through our Python scripts. Um, it's time to get a little paranoid. Um, so we give some information when we make HTTP requests. And so once again, we're using some of the cool um, tools that are available from httpbin.org. And what we want to do is see the user agent. So this is going to return to us what the user agent of that request was. And look, look, it, tell, it says, hey, every time we make one of these requests with the request library, it's saying it's Python requests. It even gives us some version numbers. Um, which we might not want that information to leak. 
Um, so we can actually um, adjust the headers. Here we're going to say user agent, and we're going to go um, hot Java. Does anybody remember hot Java? No, it, it's so you can. I believe you can still download it. So I, I was making this slide. Um, it turned out that you could download it, and it had a warning about how it wasn't Y two K safe. So that's how old school the hot Java um, browser is. <laughs> okay, so um, in our so we've got our session get, and then we give the URL just like we did before. And this is probably be familiar to you if you've used um, headers, special headers, custom headers with the request library. It's quite the same. So now we just are going to pass headers to headers. So what we did was we made a dictionary of those headers. And in that dictionary, we put user agent and then that browser. Ooh, too fast. Sorry. Okay. So now we can make the request. The request comes back. Now we're including that request, the user agent of hot Java. And that's what it thinks it is. So now people don't won't know that we're actually just running a Python script to do these HTTP requests. Um, using the session objects means we have cookies. Um, so this is good and bad. I mean, a lot of people don't like cookies, but for a lot of things you might be wanting to do with um, HTTP requests, it's going to be necessary to have cookies. So we're going to have a little example here. Once again, HTTP bin has this cool little URL to um, set cookies. So we're going to set that cookie to hello, and then we're going to uh, do a session get, and that's going to, so this URL is going to actually just return us what the value of the cookie is. So in this URL, we set it to hello, and this one, we're going to see what it says. So, hey, look. The session cookie is hello. So we're able to set our own cookies. And we can also kill the cookies. So just by session cookies dot clear, that's going to clear out those cookies right out and just get rid of them. So if you wanted to, if you wanted to make a series of um, HTTP requests through this session object and you want each one to clear the cookies, you could just manually clear them out. Uh, and yeah, cookies gone. Uh, conclusion. So yes, in this fantastic video, we learned how to, um, well, one of the ways to use Tor with the Python request library. Hopefully you found um, this useful. Um, yeah. And so if you like this video, please hit that um, like button down below. And if you want to see more programming and open source software videos, then subscribe. Um, thank you so much for watching this video. I'm going to try to make them more regularly. Um, thank you again.